All right, this is going to be about chapter 19, so uh, let's get going. So the main idea of chapter 19 is sort of an extension of all the things we've been doing so far with regards to social behavior. So uh, this should hopefully bring together both ideas of information cascades and network effects into like the actual social network. So the main idea or the first idea of this is thinking about, you know, someone in a network that's linked to other people in the network. So if uh, let's say two people are linked together, it's possible in the network that there can be a cascade if there's an incentive for those two people to have their behaviors match. So I've uh, put in a game uh, matrix here where you would say, you know, basically what the, what we were calling a coordination game. And that is, you know, W and V need to get their behaviors to match. If they both do A, they get re both get reward A. If they both do B, they get reward B, and if they do something different, they get reward zero. Um, you might be thinking about, you know, there's uh, non-reward is one of the exercises in the book, uh, where if you, you know, there's an intrinsic award, reward to doing either A or B. Uh, what you could think of here is that the difference, this might be the difference, the A might be the difference, and the B might be the difference. All right, so, um, that's exciting here, but what we need to remember here is it's not just V and W together. V has other people that they're linked together in the network. So this is not from the book. Um, this is like, if you actually think about this in terms of, um, you know, what's like the, you know, if you extend this game to the other nodes. So we got here a situation, remember it's a coordination game. If I'm V, and it's not just me with V, remember it was W before, and instead it's me V with other nodes that I'm connected to. So every other node that I'm connected to, what happens is if I'm V and I choose A, my reward is the proportion of the other nodes that also choose A. If I choose B, my reward is the proportion of other nodes choosing B. So that's, you know, P is the pro proportion of nodes using A, one minus P is the proportion of nodes using B. And hopefully if you like go through this matrix, you can see where it's the, you know, the act, the, you know, what the actual payoff is depending on what happens. So, you know, if I'm A, um, I get the probability of people choosing A. If a bunch of other nodes choose B, then there's a different proportion of probability to those people. Um, I would like to emphasize here in the book, there's a, a, a whole, the whole set is about actual adoption. We'll get to that in a second. What I want to get at here is this is about, remember in uh, network effects, we were interested in the expected adoption. So this, what I'm showing you is going to work for expected adoption. So uh, we got two situations. Remember for evolutionary stability, we had one where it was, you know, if a is the dom or is the current what we call the incumbent everybody's using a then remember we had the you know a greater than c idea so if b invades um, <clears throat> then the idea of you know is a still evolutionary stable is if um, a is greater than c and here that is proportion of people using a is greater than one minus the proportion of using B. And so we're looking here at, you know, basically what is the idea that V will continue to use A or will they switch? In this situation, if the proportion using A times the reward for using A is greater than the proportion choosing B times the reward for using B, that's pretty obvious, then they'll stick with A or not, okay? Now remember we had the idea of, remember the flip side was, you know, what if everybody is currently using B and A invades, and then we had that idea of um, A is at least equal to C, and then um, B was greater than D. And so here we have um, the setup there. And you'll notice here in both situations, you notice it's PA, right? PA equal and PA e is greater than. That's the same as it was before. So if PA is greater than one minus P times B, 
then you're going to um, have something evolutionarily stable. So we're you know interested here in you know is A dom is A going to continue and or is B going to continue? And so I want to emphasize here in the real world, right? The P's are you know for V P is only estimating it. They're estimating the expected adoption of other people. It might be unreliable, and remember we had that with the cascades that they might do things that are unreliable. And so this really brings it hopefully together. Uh, we can go through the math here. And so let's say, you know, generally speaking, we had that PA is greater than one minus P times B. If we do our algebra here, you'll get uh, the situation where they're going to choose or they're going to switch if P is greater than B over A plus B. That is the formula from the book. So this is the algebra behind it. And the idea again comes from the evolution in the or it works with evolutionarily stable. And that is V is going to switch to A when, and we're here we're going with tie goes the invaders if P is greater than B over A uh, plus B. Okay, so this is again for estimates. So if I estimate the proportion of nodes connected to me doing A will be at least P, I will choose A. So if I can do, you know, it, hit that uh, threshold there, I'm going to switch. Now let's go back to the book. This should be a review. So this is actual adoption. And what we're looking at here is, this is almost like in the uh, network effects chapter when we went to, you know, we remember we had the expectation, self-fulfilling expectation idea. But in practice, remember we had that idea, you know, sometimes there were fewer and more, and this is where it's happening like in practice. And so here we would say, the book's idea is that it doesn't necessarily matter what your expectations are if your neighbors are actually switching. And so here we're going to like an actual switch. There's no information that sort of this trend is coming at all. And so I guess the book is trying to emphasize that this uh, sort of adoption uh, cascades will happen just in actual reality, the information being other people are actually using it. I just want to emphasize though, it's um, also, it also works with expectations. So uh, that's exciting here. So remember here it's how many people are using A, how many people are using B. And notice here P times D is um, proportion of people is P. D is the number of people in the network. So P times D is, you know, here it would be three. Uh, 1 minus p times d is going to be 4, and then you know, anyway. And so it's kind of, yeah, um, it, the net result is the same. You don't have to put the d in there because they're both, you know, d's on both sides. And you still get the b over a plus b. All right, so actual adoption. Uh, when a equals 3, so the reward for choosing a is 3, the reward for b is choosing 2, a is going to thread, spread through the network. And what we have here is, you know, a equals three, b equals two, the threshold is two out of five. And so once um, <clears throat> the number of people surrounding you, the proportion is higher than two out of five, you will adopt. So uh, this is an example straight out of the book. You got two nodes, the additional adopters, the second stage, um, if I'm R, now I have only three sets, and notice here I have two out of three, which is actually greater than two out of five, so I'm going to adopt, uh, same with T. Uh, S doesn't adopt until the later one, sort of in the next stage. So remember, this is actual, like actually seeing these people have adopted. Again, it's not expectations. All right, so that's very exciting. Um, the book is important to note there, if any time you have a cluster, a low cluster density, that's going to block the adoption. So here we have basically that's the same network we had before. You'll see it's going to spread like to the 5 and to the 10, and then it's going to spread to the 4 and the 9. Anyway, it'll eventually spread mostly through the network. But what happens here is it's going to end because it spreads through this cluster where it's fairly tightly, um, like where there's enough density that you can have a situation where more than two out of five people uh, neighboring them are adopting. But once you hit a, an edge where there's not um, enough of that to get above the two out of five, then the adoption process stops. Okay, so the book stops it. Remember, they're doing actual adoptions here. 
I will note again, if you can raise the expect expected adoption, for example, for node number two to think, you know, hey, more than two out of five people are going to adopt this, then you can spread it into there too. So that's, um, you know, you're not doomed of stopping it at the edge of a cluster. One other thing that the book is not good about noting is that <clears throat> this idea of a cluster density. So they identify these clusters here and they've um, done some nice circles around it here and the density of the like the interior cluster that they circled you'll see here um, that they've sort of calculated that uh, what i want to note though is what we're missing in the book is sometimes they forget there's these enormous 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 data sets and to find clusters in there what you need is that everyone needs to be connected with a certain amount of density within the cluster. And so if we're looking at these clusters here, you know, you think like, why didn't they just draw the circle around nodes four through 17, like have that be one big cluster. And we can see by looking at it that there's, there's, you know, three different clusters here, but you can see it. You could also measure it too, by just sort of hard coding it. But, um, I think the book's idea of the clusters isn't necessarily good. What I want, what I want to emphasize here is if your cascade stops, the cluster um, that you've sort of finished off is that you've reached the boundaries of the cluster where the density is um, less than what you need here. So it's the edge, it's the low density at the edges that defines the cluster itself. So the top left cluster, if you look at number two, it has only one third of its connections into the center cluster that blocks the cascade because two fifths is greater than or equal to one third. And down on the bottom right, it's a similar thing. I didn't give you the actual numbers, but you know the difference, like why it doesn't spread to 11, 12 or 14 is for the same reason. Like there's this thinner, there's a thin um, like boundary of the cluster. It's not because the inside density of the cluster is so low. It's the, the problem is the issue of the boundary. Okay. So if you're looking at these clusters by doing this adoption cascade, you can actually find every cluster with a density of um, two fifths. But um, what do I want to say here? It's really that you know, you're going to pick an arbitrary amount of density and then you're going to define the clusters based on that density. So you'd be like, hey, I have this huge graph. Show me all the clusters where the density is, for example, here two fifths and I could you know, break it out that way. OK, so here we are at bridges. So we'll obviously if you've got a situation where there's this edge that has a, the lower density here. Um, you know, the bridge is what has to help it uh, cascade. One of the things about innovation is a low threshold innovation is stuff that doesn't really help us, or sometimes it's hard to say, but like a low threshold innovation would be really simple stuff like a funny joke like it might spread or a, like a funny meme might spread across bridges where people are going to be more hesitant to share something um, so, sort of more normative like something about politics or something like a deeply held belief and so bridges you know you can expect a bridge to you know toss you know actually ca continue a cascade of something a little uh, less you know, a lower threshold um, yeah so that's exciting oh so why do we have these little clusters we did talk about um, niche marketing and that micro targeting so and the funny part about this is that you know clusters of like this severe of difference where the there's such a um, a very low edge density that would be like really high like high end or high end, high powered niche marketing or mark micro targeting where you're just, you know, trying to keep people clustered at all. Uh, there's not a lot to this anyway. So you think about if we want to um, spread an innovation, there might be a situation where within a cluster, um, you know, the, this bridge person 
you know, we could have a situation where if you could manipulate the expectation of other people doing the behavior, then you can have um, the, the cascade would continue. And I do think the book ignores this. So remember this here. The idea is when you got into the uh, political revolution thing, where it was like the friends of V might be willing to participate. Uh, the friends of U would only participate if four others do. And then everybody has to sort of share their information together. And what we're talking about is we're manipulating the expectation that it would happen and that would continue the cluster. Uh, so that's the, um, the rest of the stuff for this chapter. And yeah, that's it.